Start your weekends out with a little bit of fireworks for the 4th of July. How about that? Hi, I'm Cole. Blessed to have you this morning. Let me uh, thank all of you for being here and uh, apologize for uh, doing this in this time frame. Um, it was an uh, unbelievable time for uh, the Big Ten Conference and uh, the Ohio State University. I'm just so excited about our future. It's just phenomenal. Uh, we uh, will do our best to answer any questions you have. Obviously, there's a lot of details to be worked out, uh, but I, I do want to apologize to those of you who reached out to me over the last 24 hours or so, and I didn't respond, obviously, um, for accommodation and legal reasons, so I apologize to you. Uh, but I, we're, we're fortunate to have our president here today, and I want to thank her and any other presidents in, in the Big Ten conference. Um, they've been on this journey. Um, and uh, last night they affirmatively and unanimously uh, voted to accept the application of, of USC and UCLA into the Big Ten conference in fact of 2024. Uh, but you guys know, everyone knows here, uh, that we're blessed to have uh, Dr. Johnson as, as our president and our leader uh, because she gets it and she's been uh, significantly uh, involved in this process uh, from the very beginning and, and helped us move uh, the ball over the goal line. So uh, I want to have her share a few words and then uh, we will come back, I'll come back up and uh, we'll answer <coughs> what questions we can't answer for you. So, uh, President Johnson. Thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, obviously, a few things have happened over the last 24 hours and just want to say that we're very excited about the opportunities for our Ohio State University student athletes. Uh, U UCLA and USC, we share a lot in common. We have a very similar academic culture we're, we're committed to the opportunities for our students to compete at a very high level among uh, a number of different st sports. We're committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and uh, also um, sustainable athletic programs. Um, you know, California is home to 25,000 Buckeyes. It's the largest place uh, in the country for Buckeyes, so excited about that. I also want to say something about UCLA and USC in terms of being AAU institutions. You know, it, something that isn't often talked about at Ohio State and about Ohio State is that we are actually one of the largest research institutions in the country. We reported $1.24 billion in research expenditures, and we set a goal to double that over the in this decade, which will put us among the very upper universities in the country. Uh, UCLA and USC share that. Uh, they share that mission as well. And so I think this is going to bring us closer together and a lot of synergies uh, with the Big Ten and uh, UCLA and USC. So I'm excited about the opportunity and thank you for being here. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, we'll start with Rob Aller from the Columbus Dispatch. Gene, can you talk us through the timeline of when this, uh, when you became aware of this and, and just sort of how it came together from your vantage point? Yeah, the uh, <coughs> UCLA and uh, USC uh, formally submitted applications um, yesterday morning. And uh, Kevin Warren called a, a conference call immediately uh, for our presidents to review the application and, and consider the criteria uh, that we historically used uh, to determine if we want to uh, ultimately approve bringing someone to Obviously, there's been overtures over time uh, from different schools about the Big Ten. Um, so uh, I can't tell you exactly you know, a month or a day or anything of that nature, but during our media rights negotiations, there's been some interest by a number of schools, including them, uh, just queries. Right? And so we really hit yesterday when we actually formally got those applications. A little close to the mic. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Uh, we're going to front row to Austin Ward. Gene, I hate to immediately move past UCA, USC and UCLA into the future, but do you believe that this is it? That that's the only two that need to be added? It just seemed like they're out there on an island. That would be perhaps difficult and logistically challenging for them in the league. They're out there by themselves. Do you, do you think there will be more teams added to the Big Ten? And what does this move mean for the future of college athletics? Yeah, I think obviously we're uh, in an unbelievable, crazy time with college athletics and the, the many moving parts and 
things to be decided. I wish I had a crystal ball, Boston. I really do. Uh, Mike, you know, if you ask me this question in March of this year, I wouldn't you know, have been able to project it. So uh, I don't know. I really don't. Um, uh, obviously, uh, the landscape uh, will continue to change, and who knows how. Uh, but uh, we're really happy with this. Uh, the, the geographically, it seems really challenging, logistically. Uh, but when we think about it, uh, we have a number of Olympic sports that already compete in LA or compete in Washington or compete in Texas, so they go those long distances. And the flights from uh, um, Columbus to Chicago or to LA are really outstanding. Uh, so it might be more challenging for other schools in the league, uh, but uh, we think we can work those out. So um, at this point in time, uh, to your point, your, your main question, I just can't speculate. All right, we'll go in the front row here, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, uh, for Dr. Johnson, I mean, you went to Stanford. Um, you can probably, you understand the Pac-12 very well. You know, is, do you think this is the end of the Pac-12 as we know it, or where do they go from, from here? Um, and just kind of your thoughts on, on the fact that there is another set of dominoes being set off. Well, I think as our athletic director said, it's a little early to speculate. Um, you know, I'd be surprised if this was the last move that's made nationally, but uh, I think it's too early to tell right now. And just your personal thoughts on, you know, as a Pac-12 person? Well, uh, I was, a, as you said, an athlete at Stanford, and I really appreciated that opportunity, which is why I'm so passionate about the opportunities we have here at Ohio State. 36 sports and a thousand athletes. So when we think about what those students get, I am excited about the opportunity to have a, another venue for them to uh, compete in nationally and uh, great programs. Go to the second row right, Bill Landis from the Athletic. Uh, I suppose either of you could, could answer this. I'm just wondering about the appetite in the conference for expansion as a um, response, I suppose, to, to the SEC expanding and you look at the league and how they were consolidating power, I'm sure the Big Ten wants to be involved in shaping the future of college football as, as much as they do. How necessary was something like this to position the Big Ten to do that? Yeah, really, no, no great question, but we weren't doing it in response to the SEC. Uh, we were doing it for our needs, and obviously we're in a situation now where we're, uh, Kevin's done a marvelous job in facilitating discussions with our television and uh, so this, this helps move the needle in that regard. Uh, so it had nothing to do with you know, Texas and Oklahoma or us setting up mega conferences for, you know, for the future. It was about what, what did the Big Ten need? And uh, our marketing and media rights opportunities along with the, the great uh, relationship that we have with two institutions that culturally uh, fit us uh, was just too, too good to pass up. So it was more about those things and it was about trying to compare it to the SEC and, and move forward. Certainly, it sets us up for the future with the CFP uh, and whatever emerges uh, in that landscape. Uh, those outcomes are real. Certainly, it aligns us more with the SEC. That's an outcome, but that wasn't a driving force, if that answers your question. All right, we'll go to the third row middle of Nathan Fair, Cleveland.com. For either of you, it's about uh, 10 months ago that the commissioners of the, the three conferences in the alliance were uh, you know, discussing you know, what that meant and, and kind of the, um, the, the common thought that, you, that they all had and, and how that was supposed to work. And I think some months later, Gene, you came in and we're kind of talking about some of those same subjects. When did that change? Because it seems like there, there has been a change there. And can that, there, is there enough trust for something like that to go forward now? From, I guess, for just from your perspective from the Big Ten's side of things, when did it become um, more important to um, you know, protect its interests than continue that, that sort of broad alliance? Well, your last statement was right on the I mean, At the end of the day, we needed to look at what's best for our 14 schools and the student athletes we serve in our institutions. And, and uh, this was part of that uh, decision process. Certainly, alliance still exists because we still have uh, cooperative relationships around certain things that we do, uh, but uh, it, it certainly impacted it. Uh, and so I can't speak to the trust yet. Uh, the fallout from uh, this move is, is still fresh 
and so what happens between now and the end of next week and, and the end of uh, July uh, will help determine that. Uh, but at this point in time, it's hard for me to project um, on that trust issue that you're talking about. I have a lot of friends and colleagues in, in the Pac-12, and I was in the Pac-12. Uh, you know, conference expansion, you know, it's been in place for years. I mean, it's, this is not new. Um, I was on the committee that took it from the Big A to the Big 12. Um, so, you know, when you think about all the expansion over time, uh, you know, the, the industry gets over it. You know, they adjust and, and colleagues adjust once they find their own way. So, uh, we have a lot of volatility, volatility around a number of different issues uh, that contribute to the challenge of, the, of that trust issue that you raised. Uh, but I think it'll get back to there at some point. It just takes time. If that answers your question. All right, we'll go down to the front row. Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Gene, you mentioned uh, there were schools that reached out during this round of media rights negotiations and, and adding schools during the negotiation. What, what's the effect of that on the, the potential media rights payout that you could get the financial element, and especially for schools like you guys, which are coming out of the COVID pandemic, which certainly hurt budgets and it was held across the, the league. Well, thank you, Joey. The, uh, um, it's hard at this point in time to really <coughs> project the, the total impact. All we know is now we're in three, the top three media markets in the country, in New York, in Chicago, and California. Um, so Kevin, who's done a marvelous job in this process, uh, will continue to have discussions with our media partners throughout this month, and hopefully somewhere this fall, if not by the end of the month, uh, we'll have something uh, determined, but it's hard to project an actual number or quantify it at this point in time. Uh, we have a number of different media partners who are very interested in, in some type of a relationship. And, uh, so we'll just have to uh, see how that cascades over the next X number of weeks. But rather than a specific number, the feeling this will help? Oh, no question. Yeah, there'll be an upside. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, there definitely will be a significant upside. Um, it's just hard to say what that will be, uh, but uh, it, it's major. Picking up California and the contiguous areas, as the president shared, we have a large number of, of alums in that area. For, this, for the Big Ten Conference in our schools, that is the largest area for the Big Ten Conference. So when you think about all of our schools going out there, uh, it's going to be major. And so um, really excited about that possibility, and, and we just have to wait and see what you know what it comes out to be. Go up to the fourth row here, uh, Clay Hall, WSYX. Gene, would you entertain the notion of other Pac-12 schools joining? You know, Clay, it's, uh, I, I really can't answer that question. Um, you know, we've just been so focused on these two. Uh, it's hard to really think about that. Um, just, just happened, man. And, and we have a lot of work with these two uh, to do prior to coming in in August of uh, 24. So, you know, my head is is really more about these two, what we need to do in the immediate future, and I'm not really thinking about all the speculation out there. Uh, I'm assuming the structure of the conference will be determined in the next two years before right. divisions, et cetera, right. how it'll Yeah, be that's up. another reason that the, you know, how we will play, um, not just in football, but all the other sports as well. Um, you think about women's volleyball, there's you know, already the Big Ten was you know, one of the premier leagues in the country now, the premier league, and so, right. We just have a number of different issues to work out, not just with football, but all the other sports. Third row here, Spencer Holbrook, letter in the row. Chief, I think they were asking you about, uh, you know, understanding the big, your place in the Big Ten. You said that you understand your value within the conference and you know your talent. I think you talked a lot about the Big Ten's reasoning for doing this, but from Ohio State's point of view, why, why now for Ohio State, and how much does this affect your program moving forward in the short term since they're, they're coming in? So, yeah, great question, Spencer. Uh, you know, for, for Ohio State, um, it frankly provides um, uh, two other schools in unbelievable markets that frankly can carry some weight. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Ohio State uh, has been a program for the Big Ten over the years uh, that has been uh, at the top of the pyramid in the Big Ten and carried a significant amount of worry, weight and the value of the Big Ten. Now we have two others who can contribute to that weight. And really excited about that. That's no disparagement to any other school. That's just reality. That's 
you ask specifically about Ohio State, that's a part of it. But um, you have, as the president said, you, see, you have two institutions that have great history and tradition in everything, not just athletics, but academics. Culturally, they fit us. Um, they, they, they just align with us. Now, I happen to, to know both of the athletic directors there. Um, Mike Bowles at Cincinnati. Uh, I know his how he operates and, and, and how he leads, and obviously many of you know Martin. So um, relationships matter in these things, and and when you have you know two leaders like that, you know you, you feel comfortable uh, that um, they're going to operate like we do at Ohio State and, and have the student athlete at the forefront of their core values and how they focus. So and the same for our presidents out there. Yeah. No, I think that's right. We. Um no, I don't think everybody realizes sometimes that the Big Ten is, is uh, in addition to a great athletic conference, it's a great academic conference. So we have a network, and uh, I've known Carol Folt uh, and also Gene Block, and they share those those values. And, and that allows us a chance to, to network. I mean, I, I'm not sure if people appreciate it, but you know, Big Ten's powerhouse in engineering. They produce most engineers in the country as a, as a conference, and that's really important to the future of the country. You're adding two schools that are also outstanding in engineering, in law, in medicine. So the opportunities uh, are huge for athletics, but they're also huge for us as a university. Go over here to the right, down to Barry. Gene, you had said in the past that you saw a model coming or, or thought it would work with 130 or so schools. Is this another step towards that, you think? Yeah, I hope, uh, Dom, I, I haven't given up on that concept. I still think it's the way to go. Um, the 130 FBS schools that uh, provide 85 scholarships for football to create this model, uh, governance umbrella, um, a lot of different issues around that. Um, sure, this, this solidifies that opportunity, uh, gives us an a chance to have two other schools that uh, think like us in that regard. So not sure where that's going to go, but yes, um, it ho hopefully it moves that needle even more. Does this deal at all affect the road fall down? Yeah, so uh, those discussions have to occur. Um, obviously, nothing changes with the Pac-12 and the, the Big Ten as entities in that regard. Um, but we, I haven't been a part of any discussions with the Rose Bowl or, or heard anything from our commissioner about the Rose Bowl. All right, front row, Tim May, front row. Yeah, I got 100 questions, but I'll just ask one. Uh, for both of you guys, with the SEC sitting there with 16 teams, with the Big Ten moving to 16 teams by 2024. How does this really change, do you think, looking forward the landscape nationally, that you either got to be in a big conference or you got to be left behind to a certain extent? And I'm thinking of your alma mater, for example, Notre Dame. I mean, will there, do you expect another reach out to Notre Dame? Obviously, they were close to join the Big Ten many years ago and then backed away. Uh, but where, where does it go from here? And by the way, uh, President Fulton, I think, is an Afro native of USC. Uh, That's right. Yeah, I, you know, I, again, that is hard to speculate that, Tim. I, you know, I, I, uh, I love my alma mater, um, except when we play them yeah. in any sport. Uh, but, you know, I've always felt they should be in the conference. And I hope uh, that they're considering that. Uh, I don't know what, you know, a next step would be, but I, I've always shared that uh, I hope they consider and I hope it's the Big Ten. Uh, but, um, you know, who knows? It's, they, they've been operating the way they've been operating for a long time. So, not sure uh, what will happen there. But uh, I forgot your second but it, but it, How does it affect things going forward, do you think? Because when you look at the Blue Bloods now, we, we right. call the Blue Bloods, traditional Blue Bloods, of major college football, for example, almost everybody is in one of these two major conferences, yeah. with the exception maybe. You might throw Clemson or Florida State in there, but they were sort of trying to come lately. But it, it, well, the Big Ten, two, the two SEC, conferences will, will have 32 of the teams involved. Yes, yeah, the, the Big Ten and the SEC, frankly, separated themselves from our hands. You know, prior to Texas and Oklahoma, prior to USC and UCLA, our conferences had separated ourselves a long time ago. So this contributes to that separation, to your point. So we've always been the two prime, premier conferences in the country for a lot of different reasons. And so um, this this uh, solidifies that even more. Um, who knows what the other schools and conferences will do in reaction. Um, we just have to wait and see. But 
um, you know, who knows if there, there could be some uh, another large conference that emerges as a result of uh, these changes. So we just have to wait and see. Our perspective. Bruce and Chuck, you're you're comfortable with this? I mean, obviously, you, we two conferences have it's 32 of the teams. I'm comfortable the because uh, yes. we have an outstanding athletic director in Gene Smith. <laughs> I can't imagine doing this without someone like that as a great partner and also our commissioner, Kevin Warren. And then all the presidents and the athletic directors at, at the other universities, we all share the same ideas about the culture, the values, and the things that we're committed to. Um, you know, I was just walking in today with the athletic director and we poked our heads in and looked at the, the, the guys that were working out. And, you know, there's a lot of enthusiasm there, a lot of enthusiasm for Buckeye Nation. And you may be proud, actually. I mean, definitely. We'll go to the third row left, Doug Maurice, Cleveland.com. Uh, for President Johnson, um, why is this move good for Ohio State swimmers and tennis players and soccer players to add a conference opponent that's 2,000 miles away and they're going to have to play road games there? What's good about that? So a couple things on, on that. You're right. This is uh, the logistics are going to need to be worked out. And again, when we think about the four guiding principles of why we do this, it is committed to the experience for the student athlete. Uh, having been a, a failed swimmer growing up, never got a chance to to, to swim in college. Uh, like USC and UCLA are storied programs. You know, Pokey Watts when she was coaching USC uh, during my era. Um, those are, are great swimming programs, great tennis programs too. So I think in terms of the uh, Olympic sports and the sports that, that and we clearly care about all these sports, I think the opportunity to compete with people who really uh, are on top of the game is huge. Uh, the distance is going to be something we're gonna have to work out. We're gonna have to figure out a structure so that we uh, make sure we optimize the opportunity to compete, but also minimize the, the, the challenge of the travel and the time. Does, does any part of that go against the educational aspect of this, that if you're playing a road game on a Tuesday in Los Angeles and trying to get back for class, yeah. that that's an issue? Uh, it's been an issue since I was a student athlete. Uh, it uh, will have been road games away for two or three days, having to come back and, and sitting with the optical networks final <laughs> and circuits. It wasn't easy, but our student athletes are, are committed to the academic mission as well, so um, it is something we're sensitive about. We'll continue to apply those same ideas about how we make sure the students can succeed in the classroom as well. And this is all the same question, so I'll, I'll ask this to Gene. Could this just be football? We know that football and the TV package is the driver of this. Why can't it just be football and let, every, let the Olympic sports be in conferences with schools nearby? Yeah, that's a great question, Doug. But the <clears throat> for this particular situation, USC and UCLA um, had to really think about if it was just football coming into the Big Ten, where would their Olympic sports play? Probably wouldn't be allowed to continue to play in the Pac-12. So at the end of the day, this made the most sense for them. But relative to your bigger model, who knows? That might be a model for the future that evolves over time. Uh, but because uh, that's not a new thought process, it's been out there before. But for these particular schools, it made sense. And actually, to your earlier question, uh, the number of sports that will have to compete midweek uh, will be minimized because you, we, one, that will be a major focus of ours. Uh, but really, when you think about it, there's there's very few sports that actually will be in that space. Our, many of our teams already go west. They compete against UCLA, USC, Washington, or Texas. So we got a lot of our Olympic sports that go out there already. So we have to be very strategic to make sure we don't put teams in that situation. Basketball will probably be the one that will be most challenging because of our television relationships. So I think the Olympic sports actually won't be as big as what we're thinking relative to that issue. The fact that we're recruiting young people, and I have to compliment our coaches, who are just as competitive in the classroom as they are on the field or in the pool or whatever. We had 35 of our 36 teams with a 3.0 GPA or higher, 788 student athletes with a 3.0 GPA or higher. I mean, it's just, they are, they are competitive. So I don't see this getting in the way. Frankly, in some of them, they'll be studying on that long plan taking advantage of that time. So I, I, I just see a lot of different things that would be beneficial. I actually also see 
Some of our student athletes who have never been to LA have an opportunity to go to the Guggenheim Museum. And there's so many different things that I, we have to be smart about in order to take advantage of this relationship and not damage their unbelievable effort in the, in the classroom. And we will be, we'll be, we'll be focused on that. We'll go fourth row middle, Jackie, WSYS. Can you guys talk about the financial impact now that we have these two schools joining the Big Ten, um, specifically here at OSU? Because we know it all boils down to money. How could you say that? <laughs> Keeping it real. <laughs> I knew you would do that. Um, obviously, uh, as shared earlier, uh, this contributes significantly to our ability to have a, a great financial relationship with our television partners. Um, again, uh, I think it's the second largest uh, market in the United States. Uh, so when Ohio State goes out to play USC, that will be phenomenal uh, viewership uh, with that contest. Uh, so um, I can't quantify your question, Jackie. I just know it will be significant. And obviously, uh, Kevin Bourne, uh, along with his team, uh, will uh, share that, that information when we get to that point uh, somewhere in late July or maybe in August. Uh, but uh, it, it will be big. Do you want to add anything further? <laughs> It'll be big. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got time for just a couple more. Uh, Jacob? The lantern, I just want to make sure I didn't miss your hand. Are you you're, you're good? Okay. We'll go right here. I'll see Gene, did you guys, I guess for both of you, when you're casting the vote yesterday, because you've been around college athletics for a long time, you've been involved both sides with those leagues. You know the tradition, you've always been a proponent of that. What were the emotions, the emotional part of yesterday when you, that vote you cast is going to change college athletics permanently? Did you sense the significance of that historically, otherwise? What, what did you think when you cast the, the actual votes? Like, this is what's gonna happen. We, I think we understood how game-changing this is. Um, so it wasn't taken lightly. In the presidents, we had a, a great discussion. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we think this is the best thing for our student athletes. And, and again, I think it's the best thing for the Big Ten. And as I said earlier, Big Ten is, is fabulous athletic conference. It's even greater academic and athletic conference. So this allows us to expand that, that reach, those connections. So think about every month we'll be, we are on a call with all 14 presidents, now we'll be 16. So there'll, there'll be a lot of uh, additional opportunities to connect to enrich the opportunities for our faculty, students, and staff, as, as uh, Athletic Director Smith mentioned. So yes, but we understood that this is um, this big. I have to share a promise to your question. Uh, because really, as athletic director, we're just listening because the presidents are just you know, having their conversation and really to their vote. Um, but as I saw it coming to a positive vote, uh, and even prior to that, um, you know, I could, all I could think about to some degree with my colleagues, it gets back to somebody else's question earlier, uh, Nathan's question. Um, you know, Pat Chung is a very good friend of mine at, at Washington State. What does it mean to him? You know, we talk about that trust factor, Nathan and Bernard. Bernard Muir at Stanford was a personal friend of mine. So I was ment mentally, as they're going through that conversation, I'm thinking about, okay, what's happening to my, my colleagues? Uh, Jim Cohen at Washington, who's just a phenomenal leader. Um, so yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's a very good question. It got a little personal for me in the moment of time as I was listening uh, to their conversation. We got time for two more question askers, so we'll go to Pete from one of the row. For either one of you, I mean, today's July 1st. It's the first year anniversary of NIL, um, and, and we're talking about TV money, and, and there's going to be bigger payouts for these schools. Are we headed towards a place where athletes get a share of this television money? Or is this fast tracking that? And, and are we headed towards a collective bargaining or, or unionization? <coughs> No, I think they're two separate issues. Uh, they, are, they are connected in a way they will be connected and there'll be things that we have to consider as, as the presidents and athletic directors, um, but I do see them as two separate issues. So finally wrap it up with Dover Middowitz, from this dispatch. Gene, uh, I'm assuming you've been in contact with your coaches uh, about this, what's been their reaction? I mean, Brian <coughs> Day's mentors is Chip Kelly. Um, I mean, just 
what, what's been the reaction of, of your coaches in terms of what this means for their their uh, teams? Yeah, I've only talked to a few of them. Actually, I actually have a Zoom with them after this uh, to, to talk with more. Uh, we were obviously uh, restricted uh, as far as uh, uh, communication and, and confidentiality and, and those type of things. So I have a Zoom right after this with uh, all the coaches. And, uh, but I did talk to Ryan, um, and, and he's very supportive of this. He's excited about it. Um, uh, Chris Holman, he's excited about it. So uh, they, they see the vision here. They understand it. They know, you know, they're, you know, they're they're worried about what's in front of them. Twenty four is a long ways away for them, and so, but but the, the prospect uh, of those two schools in our league, they're really excited about. One more beach really volleyball court, really, really quick. Got to got to be put in. Tim May Beach volleyball court. Yeah, yeah. That's as soon as you write that check, we'll put it in place. <laughs> Gene, just I'm, I'm trying to flip this and think of it in my head. You guys have talked about the, the, the Big Ten and how it has become clear that the SEC and the Big Ten have separated themselves. Um, there are a lot of factors that went into that. But I'm just, what if today was Ohio State and Michigan announcing they were joining the Pac-12, right? There, there's there gotta be an alternate universe where that's what this is, right? You could flip this, hey, LA, that's cool. That's, we're gonna go join that conference. Why is it this? Why is it that you guys are staying here, the Big Ten, is staying and adding. Why are we not in the world where Ohio State's leaving with a partner and going somebody else? Why did we get to this spot? <clears throat> well, you, you, well, the, the, uh, uh, you know, the Big Ten to Ohio State and Michigan, uh, the, the tradition, the history, the relationships, and what we've accomplished thus far is solid. You know, technically, we didn't have to do anything because what we're doing is good. Um, and so even when we're talking about divisions or you know, eight versus nine or all those type of things, let's keep in mind, we're pretty solid. I mean, the people, some of you were here when we started the Big Ten Network, we didn't have full coverage in Ohio. Remember that? Remember that week leading up to that game and there were some parts of Ohio that didn't have the game on? Oh my goodness. So thank goodness social media wasn't big at that particular time. But the reality is the Big Ten is solid. So the only time in my tenure that I ever had that thought in my head was during the pandemic when we couldn't play. That's the only time that I talked to the boss about, you know, maybe we just go independent. You know, my emotions were driving me more than my you know, rational thinking. But uh, the Big Ten solid, Doug, it's, it's, it's great. And so we're a place where schools want to be. And so bringing them in strengthens the Big Ten for all the reasons we talked about. And there's no reason for, in my view, for a team up north or us or Wisconsin or anybody to think about leaving something that is very strong. We just made it stronger. So I'm, you know, I'm just, I get excited about the possibility in 24. But to your question, in my 17 and a half years here, uh, it's only been one time I thought about, okay, let's go independent, we'll see if we can get our own deal and do that one. So. <laughs> I'm on that last year for seconds. <laughs> well, and you weren't alone. <laughs> yeah, I weren't alone. I talked to her about it. But I, I want to come back and say something about the, the, the uh, what's happened. This was something UCLA and USC approached us. And as our athletic director said, this is um, a really solid, stellar conference. It's something also I want to step back for a minute and just and think about where the future of the country is going. We know a lot about Intel investing in central Ohio in Silicon Heartland. It is really important for the future of the country that the Midwest step up and continue to be an innovative engine. And when you think about these, the, the universities that are in the Big Ten, uh, this is gonna help strengthen the connections to the West Coast, the East Coast, and I think that this is our time in the Midwest to continue to build on that excellence and, and educate students that are going to be required for the future of the country, especially with, if Intel, the semiconductor industry, is going to reshore, and they're going to reshore here in Ohio. So that's, I think, the reason we stay. 
always we're, we've got the conference. They want to join us. We're, we're excited about that opportunity. All right, guys. Thank you very much, Gene. Thank you, President Johnson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.